Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today, we are going to take you on a journey step by step from your starting snare sound that you use every day to something with more openness, liveliness, dynamics, everything we want. If you're like me, you probably have a snare sound that you gravitate towards, that you like, both on recordings and what you do at home or in any playing situation you might be in. And it turns out that there is a lot more to getting a starting point snare sound or like something that just makes you happy all the time than I ever thought. When I was starting out, I didn't really know anything about tensioning or relative tensioning between the heads. I just tried things until something felt good enough. And then I ran with that and pretty quickly I found myself accumulating drums because I wanted different sounds rather than diving into just what else the drum in front of me was capable of. We've touched on this a few different times in the past in other episodes, but today we want to do a step-by-step -step version of this moving from what I find often when people hand me snare drums that they'd like me to work on for them over to where I'll end up with that drum when they're asking me for something that's versatile, open, and that has a lot of possibilities in it. Regardless of the nature of your playing situation, there are benefits for you here. Whether it might be you're a student and you need more dynamic range and rebound out of your drum for learning rudiments, or if you're playing a lot of different venues in a rock band and you want to be able to make adjustments given what you're hearing in a given space, there's something for everyone. Today, we're going to use our trusty Superphonic. We have our pretty standard coded G12 over a snare side 300, which we use all the time. And we're going to keep all of that and move through not just tuning, but also some adjustments to the wires and muffling to get us where we need to go. First things first, let's hear where we're starting. We're not saying that this is a bad sound. There are no bad sounds here today. This is about just moving from one place to another. Don't forget to stay with us till the end where we're gonna do a back-to-back -back comparison of all the sounds both individually and in the context of a groove. What I'm hearing here, and hopefully you're also hearing at home, is that this is a fairly choked sound. It has a pretty strong punch to it, but the wire response is not great. There's not much going on in terms of sustain at all, not just because of the tape, but also because of other factors that we're going to get into throughout the journey today. And additionally, the dynamic range is not all that it could be. When I play quietly, I'm not getting snare response. When I play really hard, it's choking out. It would be passable if I was only really playing super hard and honestly, not bad. But this is, after all, snare drum and there's a lot more we could get out of it. The only thing that's visibly going on here beyond that it's a drum with heads on it is that there are two pretty big pieces of tape on the batter head. These are here to control overtones and sustain a little bit and try to dry the snare sound out so that we have something that's easy to play. We've all done it at one time or another. Nothing wrong with that, but the first thing we're going to do is take the tape off, see what we're really working with here. Right away, a whole lot more going on in the sustain, in the overtones. Pretty wild, sounds a little bit out of tune, and this is exactly what I was expecting. If you're following along at home with your personal drum, we must state that 
Not all the sounds today are gonna to be great along this process, and this is about getting to the end of the process. Don't worry if pulling the tape off is making things worse. There's a few points here where things are gonna get worse before they get better. At this iteration, the chokiness and also the wildness of the overtones if we get off center is starting to get pretty dramatic right away. So we're gonna to have to make some changes to start to move this toward a more usable sound that isn't quite so scary. If you're enjoying these new style videos that we're doing, we would love for you to follow the link below to the Patreon and help us continue to do this. Some of the videos we're making these days take a lot of time and a lot of work and helping us out via the Patreon is the best way to show us your love and help us continue to make these. Before we dive into tuning anything, I want to address the tension of the wires. These wires are way too tight right now, and all we need to do is use the mechanism, the knob on there, to relax them a little bit. And the way that I like to do this is to tap gently in the center of the head and slowly turn the knob counterclockwise, release the wires, until you're only hearing wire sound and no boing before the wires activate. This is going to allow us to have snare response at quieter dynamics and better diagnose exactly what we need to do with regards to tensioning of the heads and changing those tensions. Additionally, and we are all mildly guilty of this at one time or another, over tensioning the wires for the sake of getting articulation is a natural thing to do. It makes sense. The tighter they are, the more articulate they ought to be. However, we are going to adjust tension as we go, but we're going to get our articulation via tuning rather than just tensioning the wires. This is giving us a sense of the heads and now I can both hear and if I use my hands to check, I can see that the snare side head is very, very, very tight. This is another thing that oftentimes happens when people want to have tighter response from the snares. More tension means tighter response. Not always the case, there's a ceiling there. So we're gonna reduce the tension on the snare side head. Depending on the tuning of your current drum, if you're following along, you may need a different amount of this to get you what we're looking for. I'm doing about a half a turn. Go a little bit at a time and experiment until you're starting to get some tone out of that head. Quick, important, global tuning PSA. If you're tuning down from a given tension on one of the heads, make sure that you, at the end, tune up just a tiny bit to put a little tension back on there. This will reduce the possibility of that head slackening further when you start to play the drum. Okay, this is a little crazy. It's getting crazier. This is one of those moments where it's getting worse before it's gonna get better. But now there's a lot more resonance in the drum. The drum is moving, the wires are moving a lot. We don't necessarily need all of this wildness in the wires, but rather than fussing with the snare side head, now because we've lowered it, the entire tone of the drum is lowered even though we didn't mess with the batter head. What this means for us is that now to get back some of the articulation we want and bounciness of the whole drum, we're gonna raise the tension on the batter. This is particularly important if you wanna be able to play things articulately at a quieter volume at a snare wire tension that isn't overly choked. We're gonna to have to have more tension on there than we had before. It is also worth noting that at any time, it's worth experimenting with the tension of those wires because as we're changing tension on the heads, especially the snare side, it's possible that they are getting tighter or looser because we're changing the head tension. So don't be afraid to make micro adjustments there along the way and just follow your ear. This is our goal sound. 
overall pitch wise for the drum, it's not that far away from where we started because we lowered one head tension and raised the other effectively staying in the ballpark of the same overall note. But what we have now is the ability to use a wide range of tensions on the wires and also to use a wide range of dynamics on the drum in general and get a pleasing sound throughout all of that. Particularly moving between very quiet things and very aggressive things, we're getting articulation in all of those places and now I can hit the drum pretty much as hard as I want to and not worry about it choking out and also play as quietly as I want and doesn't choke there either. Finally, if I'm walking into a studio with this, my chosen medium sound, and I don't know what kind of situation I'm going into, or even if it's just something like playing in a restaurant or playing with friends in a new space, I do always bring tape with me. See, we circled back around to the tape. Because a little bit of tape actually goes a really long way. And I, in the past, and I've seen with other drummers as well, tend to start with too much tape rather than a little bit at a time to see how much we actually need. I'm gonna make a very small piece of tape in a little flag shape here that is not taking up a lot of surface area and is right up close to the edge only to take out just a little bit of that high end sustain and focus the overall sound of the drum. The choice to muffle none or a little or a lot has everything to do with the playing context that you're in. We have personal tastes as well and we can work with those additionally, but getting to a place where the drum is sounding in a way that's fitting into whatever situation you're playing in, we need to be open to any possibility. And that means anything from tape to extreme tunings in the end. All of these things are possible depending on what it is that we're doing. Now, if you started with a sound similar to where we began and it's working for you, there's nothing wrong with that. This isn't about bad sounds or telling anybody that what they're doing is wrong at all. This is simply saying that if you're frustrated with the sound of the drum that you have, it's entirely possible that the prescription that you're using is limiting the possibilities of that instrument. This is true of toms and bass drums and every single part of the kit. And this hopefully will be an opportunity for you to see two sounds that are honestly totally functional. They are at opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of openness versus tightness and all of that. But the journey in between, we think, is where a lot of people get a little bit spooked and get afraid that they can't get back to the sound that they had in the first place, which was okay. Along the way, some of the sounds are gonna be super weird. They're gonna be surprising. Your own drum will surprise you. But it is worth it in the end to know that there are other options inside of this instrument. Now, let's hear all of these iterations back to back, both individually and in the context of a groove.
All right. Thanks so much for coming along with us on this journey. Again, the Patreon link is below. Please follow it and see if there's a possible way for you to allow us to continue to do this on there. There's also extra content from most of our videos, anecdotes, other stuff. And please like, comment, subscribe, and do let us know in the comments your experiences with your standard sound. What is it? How did you arrive at it? Are there parts of it that you always take with you? Are you sick of it and want to do something else? Let us know. <laughs>